Hey guys, so the newest Inside Infinite just dropped with tons of details about infinite customization, the first named event for Halo Infinite called The Fracture. A look at Halo Infinite's customization UI, progression, menus, the battle pass, the new waypoint app, and much, much more. So let's waste no more time and get into the good stuff. So the first half of this video is going to focus on the live service and customization part of the blog. So they started by elaborating on the four pillars that all content made for Halo Infinite must abide by, and these are as follows. Healthy engagement is paramount. A player first focus must be maintained, unambiguous value must be provided, and the team should always be listening, learning, and experimenting with the content they make. And so yeah, every piece of content that has been made for Infinite and that will be made for Infinite as a part of the live service will meet all four of these parameters. So, Infinite Seasons. They talked about this a little bit in one of the blogs last week, that the first season for Infinite is going to be called Heroes of Reach, and they elaborated a bit more on them here. So, the seasons in Infinite are going to work exactly like MCCs. That's going to be a trend in this blog post. So, new seasons will contain new gameplay content, new events, new systems, new customization, new progressions, and more. And new seasons will also learn from previous seasons in terms of what worked and what didn't work. Now, these seasons are going to be quarterly, so there's going to be one every three months, roughly. Uh, but they did say that bug fixes won't be beholden to these seasons. So it's not like there's just going to be one update for Infinite every three months. There'll be, like, bug fixes in between the seasons. But basically, each major content update will take place every three months. Which is pretty good, because that gives us, like, a pretty consistent timeline as to when we can expect new content for the game as a part of the live service. So I mentioned events there, and they actually elaborated on these events in this article. So in Season 1, events are going to be fun things for players to experience and get rewarded, which is a bit of a broad statement. They said that activities are going to be mixed up every week, which to me sound like challenges, like weekly challenges. Uh, but then there's also going to be certain big weeks that are going to have events tied to them with new activities and reward tracks that will be available for free. Reward tracks basically just being a path to unlocking a certain thing. Now, around launch, there's going to be an event called The Fracture, with specific thematic rewards... One of which is the Uroi armor set that you can see here. Now, this art is absolutely beautiful and it, it has to be done by Pixel Flare. My boy will. Absolutely has to be done. It looks so good. Uh, you can see in the bottom right, actually, there's a bit of text that says Fractures Tenrai. Now, I did a little bit of research and Tenrai is actually a name for a prototyped yet abandoned Japanese fighter plane from World War II. What this has to do with Halo, I have no idea. Are fighter planes coming to Halo Infinite? I don't know, find out in 2021? I doubt it, but just an interesting little bit of information there. Now, they go on to say that cannon armor will be available in the battle pass, whereas the crazier armor, the presumably non-cannon armor, will be available from events. So, does that mean that events aren't canon? I kind of hope not. Like, I'd be fine if, like, some of them weren't canon, obviously, it's, you, so they can get a bit crazy, but I think it would still be really cool to have events that tie in with the universe and the lore and with the Zeta Halo setting. Uh, so hopefully they're not all non-canon, because this makes it sound like at least they aren't fully canon. They then elaborated once more on the number of ways that customization items and cosmetics are unlocked in Halo Infinite, and there's quite a lot of ways to unlock armor in this game. So, there is the free Battle Pass track, the paid Battle Pass track, challenges, skill rewards, event reward tracks, legacy rewards like SR-152, and campaign actions. Now, two things in there really stand out to me. Number one, legacy rewards. They spoke about legacy rewards as if SR-152 wasn't the only one. Like, I don't know why they'd mention that purely for SR-152. I feel like there's got to be some more on the way. They've got to do, like, with a renewed focus on MCC, you'd think they'd have some way to connect your progress in MCC to Infinite via an unlock. I mean, Halo 5 did it, so... I don't see why Infinite couldn't, given the renewed focus on MCC. And then the second thing that poked out to me was skill rewards, which is something that I've wanted in Halo for so long. I mean, again, Halo 5 technically kind of had it with the, like, title card emblem things, but 
you just got those by getting ranked. I'm talking like actual specific rewards for hitting certain ranks. I mean, League of Legends does this and it's so good. If you hit like a certain tier in the ranked season at the end of it, then you get a border that corresponds with that tier. So if you hit platinum, you get a platinum border. If you hit diamond, you get a diamond border, etc. And it's really cool. You also get a skin as well for hitting gold and above. I would absolutely love it. If 343 did like unique armor coatings or armor sets, or maybe even just helmets or something for players who hit a certain rank in matchmaking in a certain playlist or whatever in a season that would be so so cool like maybe get like a golden armor coating if you hit I don't know diamond or above or something or maybe get like a unique helmet if you hit champion or something I, I would absolutely love to see that it'd be a great incentive to get people to improve at the game beyond just skill I think it works really well in League of Legends and I think it would also work really well in Halo they also said that in Season 1, certain weeks and days have some significance both out and also in the game, and will provide rewards if players log in on the days or during those weeks. Now, that to me sounds like the universe and like possibly Zeta Halo are going to be evolving along with the live service of this game. It feels like they're going to try and sort of ingrain the lore into the evolution of the live service, which is something that I really, really like. Here we have our first look at Infinite's customization screen. Now, this is actually from the waypoint section of the article, but I figured that we'd cover it here. So here we can see the purple and gold and blue armor. They've kind of got their own colors to them, which to me indicates that rarity to some degree is back. I mean, let's be honest, every game under the sun nowadays has like cosmetic items ranked purple, gold, blue, white, green, etc. So this is no surprise to see, but what it means, I don't know, maybe it's rarity, maybe it's for the difficulty to unlock it, I don't know. All the actual individual customization pieces here are already known about, I believe, besides one, kit. Now, this probably means armor core, but I don't know, the actual picture looks like a cardboard box to me, so... I don't know, maybe snakes hiding in there or something. <laughs> Interestingly, if you zoom in on this laptop here, you'll see that the Mark 7 armor core is unlocked by completing Chief's story in the For Our Tomorrow campaign pass. So, does that confirm a campaign battle pass? Maybe it just means campaign challenges, but with the game being live service and also like semi open world to a degree, I really wouldn't be surprised to see an ever-evolving battle pass be a part of the campaign like it is multiplayer. And honestly, a campaign exclusive progression system is honestly a really, really cool idea. I really like the idea of that. It's a great way to get people to go back to the campaign and to also reward players who mainly just play campaign and aren't really bothered about multiplayer. There's a lot of those guys out there, so this is a fantastic way to reward them. Although I do really hope that these battle passes are included as free as a part of Infinite's campaign, because obviously you have to pay full price, $6 or probably £50 for the campaign. So hopefully that comes for free as part of the campaign and they don't expect people to pay even more money on top for these. I wouldn't imagine they would do, but I'm gonna watch out for that one. They said the reason they designed the UI this way was to make it easier for players to quickly pass what items they have versus ones that they're yet to acquire. So fingers crossed we don't have to spend three years scrolling to the side like all the way through all the sub menus to find armor like we did in Halo 5. They also said that you can now favorite items and inspect them to learn how to acquire them. They once again mentioned that the battle passes in Infinite never expire, which was a decision that was made ages ago as a part of the player first pillar. And here we have an in-depth shot of Infinite's battle pass, which is full of armor, visors, and I think coatings, I think that's what they are. So here we can see as well some tiers, which is tier 15 in this case, have two unlocks to them, which is kind of good. I mean, most battle passes do that, to be honest. Uh, and yeah, I think visually speaking, this battle pass just looks like a battle pass. There's nothing really that stand out here. It looks very familiar for anybody who plays online multiplayer games nowadays. Every game has one of these. It just looks like another battle pass. So rounding out the customization part of the video, we have two Spartans to very briefly break down. First one is a soldier Spartan with the wild coven armor coating. Now, we've already seen this guy before, but again, I've just got to say Gen 3 soldier, especially with this armor coating, looks absolutely beautiful. What an armor set. And then we have this Mark 7 Spartan wearing the cadet orange coating. Now, we've seen this guy before. He looks absolutely fantastic once again. Uh, but the idea that this coating is called cadet orange, 
hopefully, fingers crossed, that means that we'll, we'll get coatings just for each individual color by default. Fingers crossed for free. That's the least they can do with this system, I think. Uh, just at least give us like solid base colors for free and not make us have to unlock or pay them. Uh, and then have like the more stylized ones be unlockable or paid for. But just at the very least, give us solid colors for free and that'll kind of take the sting out of the coating system. But yeah, Mark 7 just, <laughs> once again, looks absolutely beautiful. And the final bit of information is that there's more customization news coming soon. And that's all they said. We don't know when, but apparently there's more coming soon. So you guys know that I'll be covering that the second it comes out. So make sure you hit subscribe and hit the bell to turn all notifications on. You should definitely do that right now. Thank you. And then the second half of the article and video is about the new Halo Waypoint app and also website. So the Waypoint app and Waypoint experience, the new one is called Halo Waypoint V Next. Not quite sure why it's called V Next, but fair enough. Uh, that's what it's called. And basically it's meant to be a companion app. You can access your customization, your progression and your gameplay stats on the app. Uh, here we have a picture of the Spartan render, which looks better than it did in Halo 5, but still not perfect. Although I would assume that's because the app isn't finished yet. I would assume that the Spartan would be looking a lot better when the app is finished. Now you can see some customization details here that you'll be able to go through on the app and change your Spartan in real time wherever you are on your phone. And then on this screen, we can see the Spartan's level, his XP and the amount required to hit the next level, uh, his active challenges, his battle pass progress, and also what I assume is the timer for the season ending at the bottom of the screen. All good information. The new Waypoint app will support Halo Infinite, Halo 5, and also all of the additions to the MCC. They're also going to be experimenting with some social features down the road as well. Here we have a look at the new Waypoint logo, which kind of reminds me a little bit of the Spartan Assault logo. Very, very similar design. Kind of, kind of clean though. I like it. Uh, here we have a look at cannon fodder in the new waypoint design, which does look really sleek. And the fact that all the text is bunched up is honestly going to make it so much easier to make videos about the articles. Going back to MCC, they've said that in-depth stat tracking is going to be one of the main features of the app. And they're already tracking our stats for that. And we have a preview of it here. Uh, you can also see your MCC season progress and also rewards as well. The Infinite and Waypoint UIs were apparently designed to be in parity with one another, so they feel like the same thing. The app is designed to feel like the game. It's meant to be a companion app of companion apps, as they call it. Basically, a natural extension of it. And finally, here we have a look at some of the new Waypoint service medals. These are not Halo Infinite medals. These are just service medals for your Waypoint forum account that you can put on it and that you can earn by doing certain things on the forums. And that does it for the Waypoint section of the video but we're not done yet. One final effort still remains. Our boy, Joe Staten, has some words for us. During the Halo Infinite section of the Xbox and Bethesda game showcase, I said the Master Chief is the heart of Halo. This is true, and we can't wait for all of you to play the latest epic and intimate chapter of the Chief's story, but it isn't the whole truth. There's another hero standing beside the Master Chief at the very heart of the Halo universe. Some of you may have met this hero way back in 2001 with the launch of Halo Combat Evolved. Some of you will meet this hero for the first time this holiday. Because this hero is you. Or rather, the character that you become every time you step into a Halo multiplayer match. And the next step of their journey begins with the launch of Halo Infinite's first multiplayer season, which we're calling Heroes of Reach. Customizing your character, making your Spartan look and sound exactly the way you want is a huge part of the journey. So is tracking your triumphs and setbacks or interacting with your friends and foes on a new and improved Halo Waypoint. But your journey is more than that. At the center of our plans is a goal to deeply root your multiplayer character in the larger Halo universe and give them a vital, active role in the Halo story moving forward. How exactly we're going to do this in the seasons and years ahead? Well, we're not ready to share details yet, but I can share that we picked Heroes of Reach as a seasonal theme for very specific reasons. Reach has a rich history. It's a key location for Spartans of old and a focal point for a new generation of Spartans preparing to wrestle with the perils and the mysteries of a galaxy that has fundamentally changed after the events of Halo 5. Indeed, Halo Infinite's first multiplayer season takes place at a transformational moment in Halo history, at the pivot point from one generation of heroes to the next. In this moment, 
your multiplayer hero is waiting just off stage, geared up for battle and ready to spring into action. And their epic story has yet to be told. Thank you very much, Joe. And I've got to say, the idea of making your multiplayer Spartan a larger character in the universe and actually giving them a vital and active role in the story is something that is very intriguing. That's kind of what Spartan Ops tried and, let's be honest, failed at doing. So I'm very down for the idea. If the execution can be done right, then it could be really good. I don't know, maybe that's not even what they mean. Maybe they just mean like, oh yeah, multiplayer is canon still, by the way. But either way, I'm intrigued. I'm very, very, very intrigued. I'm also intrigued to see why the first season is called Heroes of Reach, besides the obvious Reach armor. But yeah, that's going to do it for this month's Inside Infinite article. Let me know what you guys think down below of what Joe said, of the Waypoint article, and of all of that customization goodness that all looks so damn good. Man, I'm so excited to jump into this game. Oh my god, can Holiday hurry up already, please? Man, I'm so excited for this game. Anyways, I'm going to round the video out here because it's half past one in the morning and I got to go get it edited because it's kind of late and I want to go to bed. So uh, thank you very much for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. Uh, and I'll catch you all in the next one.